Welcome back to Everyday Adventures in Cooking with Rick. I'm Rick. Uh, you've probably seen uh, some of me now. Hopefully a lot of you have seen our previous episodes and we're putting together a whole Sunday meal, a traditional, uh, would be a traditional Italian Sunday meal. And no meal is complete without bread, fresh baked bread. This is something that a lot of people would never attempt, but it actually is very easy. Again, I have my KitchenAid stand mixer here that makes it a lot easier, but you can absolutely do this by hand and knead it by hand. It's just, it does uh, make it a lot easier if you have your stand mixer with your dough hook on there. It makes the job a lot easier. Recipe couldn't be easier. It's flour, yeast, warm water, and salt. That's it. So the way we're gonna start this, we're gonna take water, about 110 degrees, right out of the tap is fine. One package of active dry yeast. We're gonna put that yeast right into the warm water. We're gonna mix that up. Just to get that yeast mixed into the warm water. It only takes a couple of minutes and you're gonna see as that yeast becomes reactivated and the water starts to bubble and you'll know that that yeast is alive and is good. Now we're going to take, I have three cups of bread flour. You can use all purpose flour, but the bread flour is going to give you a better result. It has a higher amount of protein and gluten in it and it's going to make for a much better bread. So we're going to put our three cups of bread flour into the mixer. We're going to put about a teaspoon of salt in there. We're just going to mix that together real quick. Get that salt mixed in there. You don't have to start the yeast in the warm water. You can just put the yeast right in the dough, put the warm water in. It will also work. I kind of like to see that the yeast is starting to uh, move a little bit, is active, and, and your yeast is good. And I can actually already see some uh, foaming happening in the cup here so we can start mixing this up. So now we're going to put our mixer on low and we're just going to start adding the water slowly. This is a cup and a half of water and we're just going to start adding that slowly into the mixer. And I don't know if the camera can see this or not but you're going to see it start to come together. Put your water in. And you're going to see that the flour is coming off the edges. It's starting to mix together. You can get your scraper. You can't always find your utensils. You can see how it's all coming together. I'm just going to stop it real quick. I'm going to get some of that flour pushed in. Put this back down. What you want this to end up with is the sides of the bowl to become clean and the dough sticking to the bottom just a little. And you can see that's already starting to happen. If the dough is too wet, add a little flour. If it's too watery, uh, I think I said that backwards. If it's too wet, add some flour. If it's too dry, add some water. So we're gonna let this mix, probably about five minutes. Let this uh, the machine knead the dough for about five minutes and we'll come back and see what that looks like. So our dough has been mixing now in the mixer for about five minutes. So we're gonna shut this down and actually it came out you can see you can't see the sides of the bowl are clean and the dough is on there on the hook which is perfect you're just going to take that dough things don't always there we go we're going to take this off clean the dough off the hook should come right off perfect now we're going to put our dough out onto our board. A little bit of flour again so it doesn't stick. You can 
smell it smells fantastic. Now we're not gonna, we've already kneaded this, so we don't have to knead it a lot. What we're gonna do now is just form it into a ball, just kind of bring it all together. And you can see the dough is uh, perfect. I have to compliment myself, but the dough did come out good. The machine did all the work, the KitchenAid. We're just bringing this together, folding the bottom underneath. And there is our bread dough. Now we're going to take a bowl, just drop a little bit of olive oil in the bowl. We're doing this so the dough doesn't stick to the bowl, because this dough is now going to rise up for about three hours. We want that to sit and proof. So we're going to get olive oil, and it keeps it from sticking, also keeps the top moist. And rather than use saran wrap or cling wrap on top of here, we have a damp dish towel. Put that right over the top. Put that somewhere warm in the kitchen or just a spot in the kitchen and we're going to let that rise for three hours and it should double in size. And then we'll come back and get the dough made into a loaf and in the oven. Okay so we have uh, we've mixed our dough for the bread and it's been rising now for three hours and as you can see and one of the things I'll just mention you know I'm trying to get out of the habit of using plastic wrap and plastic bags and things and how did our parents and grandparents do this they would always take a dish towel make it damp, put over the top, and then when you don't waste all that uh, plastic, one-use plastic. And now you can see our dough has doubled in size and uh, it looks really good. So we're gonna now form this into a loaf. Once we form it into a loaf, it has to rise for another hour before we put it in the oven. So I'm gonna put a little flour onto our board so it doesn't stick. So I'm gonna pull that dough out. Remember, we oiled the bowl so it comes out pretty easy. Beautiful. I have to have someone come in and do the dishes later. Right. So now we're just going to kind of push, knead this up a little bit. Not too much. We don't want to work the dough too much uh, because it's been rising for all that time. But we want to form it into a loaf in the shape of a loaf. Now a couple things we can do here, we're gonna, uh, we want this to be able to come off the board later. So I've put a good dose of flour. You can also use parchment paper underneath there and then you could lift the parchment paper right out and put that in the oven. I'm gonna uh, attempt to do it without that. So I've got some flour. I'm also gonna put a little semolina flour down there. It's a little coarser and it'll help that this won't stick to the pan and we can hopefully take it off later. But again, you just wanna make this into a loaf shape and just like that, nothing fancy. We're going to cover this up with our same dish towel, put that off into the side into a warm place and let it hopefully double in about an hour. Okay, so our dough uh, has now been resting for an hour, about an hour on our board. Let's see what it looks like. Beautiful. Now we've got, it's, it's doubled in size and it looks really good. I can see some air bubbles in there. So what we've done is we preheated our oven to 450 degrees. But also, I don't know if we can see in there, I have a ceramic uh, dish that I have in there that's preheated also. That cooks the bottom of the dough quickly, makes it a crust on the bottom. I also have a steam tray built into this oven. So that steam tray will steam the whole time the bread is cooking and that is really the secret to a hard crust on the outside. If you don't have, this is a, this um, KitchenAid range, uh, has a built-in steam tray at the bottom, which is fantastic. But if you don't have that, you just get a cake pan, put a couple inches of water, inch and a half of water, put it on the bottom rack, right below where you're baking, it does the same thing. So you can also, that steam really does make a difference. So what we're gonna do here now is we're gonna make three little cuts across the top of our dough. That keeps the dough from exploding, if you will, uh, as it's cooking. We're gonna get our and actually, this dough raised a little more than an hour. Uh, it's been a couple hours, so it kind of maybe got a little bit bigger than I, I thought. But we're going to get our pizza peel under there. And we're going to open our oven. And we are going to put this onto our hot pan. Perfect. And we're going to let that go for about a half an hour, approximately. You'll be able to see uh, when it's done and 
we'll have delicious home-baked bread. Okay, so our bread is in the oven. Like I said, we have about a half an hour for that bread to bake. So as long as we have the time, why don't we make a quick vegetable? This is something we used to have um, growing up, really simple. A lot of people I tell it to think, well, I never heard of that, it's crazy. But it's just so simple, so easy and delicious. It's peas and onions and olive oil, really, that's it. This is something that we would have uh, on Sunday dinner sometime. And again, it couldn't be easier. So we're gonna make this real quick. The first thing is you're just gonna chop an onion. And I happen to be using a sweet onion, a Vidalia onion. You can use any kind of onion you want. Just peel that up and uh, we're gonna chop this up into a fine chop. Now we're gonna take all of our onion peels and these are gonna go right into our compost bin on the counter. And that, again, is gonna end up in the garden soon and helping to fertilize the garden. And we're gonna chop our onion. This is a Cutco knife and I do have a few of them. They are a little expensive, but this is their vegetable cutting knife. And I'll tell you, it, it, is, a, it is a really good knife. Um, Cutco is kind of a direct sale company. And uh, someone I was coaching years ago was selling them to try and help pay for college. And I said, I'll buy a couple. And it turned out I really like these knives. They're fantastic. So we've got our onion cut up. And we're gonna now, we have a, saucepan here we're going to put it on medium heat we're going to put a little bit sorry about that camera we're going to put a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of the pan we're going to bring our onions over throw them right into the olive oil we're going to let this cook for probably uh, about five minutes or so till those onions start to get translucent, start to uh, soften up a little bit, and then we're gonna add our peas. All right, so we have our uh, onions have been cooking now for a few minutes. Uh, they're nice and soft, they're translucent. All we're gonna do is we've got some frozen peas here. And uh, they always make that look so easy on TV. They just go like that and it works. But in real life, it doesn't always work like that. We're just going to put those peas right in there. Now we have, uh, we've got a big crowd, so we'll do two bags. I don't know how many people eat peas. I know there seems to be a lot of people that, whoops, that don't like peas, but I love them. There's a few on the floor there. Don't worry about that. We're just going to mix those peas and onions together. I am going to add just, excuse me, excuse my reach, we're going to add just a little more olive oil in there. We're going to throw a little salt and pepper. And that's it. That's the whole recipe. It is so simple to make, but for me anyway, I think it's just adds a little freshness to the dinner and uh, I don't know, just something that we grew up eating and I enjoy it. So that is a simple vegetable that you can have with your pasta dinner. Our bread should be ready in a couple minutes and we'll take that out and see how that came out. Okay, so now our bread has been in the oven for about a half an hour. Uh, it's looking fantastic, so we're gonna get that bread out of the oven now. Look at that. So the, that was in there for a little less than a half an hour. And you can see that crust, and that crust comes from having that steam in the oven. Don't ask me how that works. It's a science thing that I don't understand, but, and uh, it works. And you can hear the, the bread sounds hollow. That's another test of how it's done. We're gonna let this bread cool. We don't wanna cut into it yet. You wanna let it cool for a little while before you cut into it. And this is going to be uh, fantastic with our sauce and our meatballs and our pasta. Our peas and onions are done. 
And basically the peas and onions just cook until the peas have, are not frozen anymore, until they're heated up. You want them to be fresh and crisp. You don't want to overcook them. So the peas and onions are done. I'm going to shut that off. So here we are. We have all the pieces uh, ready for our meal. And we're going to cut together in another episode where we're going to get all these pieces together and have our big Sunday dinner. We also are going to go out and get dessert at a local bakery. We're going to meet the baker and get that dessert. Uh, again, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you will make bread this weekend because it really is easy. Anyone can do it. And uh, please like the video if you like it. If you don't like it, tell me why and we'll try and change it. Leave comments, leave suggestions, leave your food memories. And, uh, you know, let's get together on this and have a good time. Thank you and we'll see you soon.